Hello, Mioni here, and welcome back to another news video for Final Fantasy XIV. This time it's a little bit different, uh, mostly because I don't have internet at the home, so I'm a little bit sort of disjointed, but we still have some news to read, and uh, regardless of what crops up in real life, I will ever you know, try to make videos regardless, um, because not everyone will actually go and read through uh, what is essentially five different sources today. There is, however, a Reddit thread that I'll link in the description where I've got this summary that I'm using for today's video. This is uh, from 11 Mile on the Final Fantasy XIV subreddit, uh, so thank you kindly to you. And of course, I believe all of this was translated originally um, from various sources, including that of the Reddit Discord community for Final Fantasy XIV as well, probably Aluna Minori and the rest of it. It's been posted there as well. So thank you kindly to you guys uh, for going out of your way and giving us this wonderful amount of information from source sources that include Gamer.ne Japan, Dengeki, Game Watch, and Famitsu. Of course, all of those publications are usually in Japanese. There is sources linked on the Reddit page that's in the description of this video today if you want to go check them out individually as well. So without further ado, let's read through this summary. So the first section is main scenario related. So this is little tidbits towards the future, not necessarily spoilers per se, um, because we're not really giving away anything here, um, but there is little tidbits of information and uh, obviously towards speculation on what's to come. So firstly, it says, Patch 5.3 is the conclusion of the Shadowbringer story. That's something we already knew. The second point says, The volume of cutscenes and voices for this patch is so far the largest in a single patch release. This is something that was talked about previously, how the patch will be enormous in terms of uh, cutscenes. Uh, I didn't know about the voices as well, so it's nice to see that they're going to add uh, even more voice acted parts to this. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, there was rumors and, you know, Yoshi P himself mentioned that it should be feature length to that of a movie. I'm not sure what that really equates to. We'll have to wait and see. Then the third point says, pay close attention to Asian Elidibus. Uh, interesting. So let's pay close attention to him in this patch <laughs> for some reason. There are quite an amount of conversations that may contain hints or later developments and isn't immediately obvious depending on the timing. So there's lots of stuff hidden and there's lots of hidden messaging, uh, sort of implications towards the future, probably for expansions, um, as you would expect from a patch like this. It says, Patch 5.3 will resolve about 99% of the story from Shadowbringers, and while it seemed unlikely to have any leftover elements that will be brought over to 5.4, the possibility is still there. So 99% of the story from Shadowbringers. So I'm guessing that patch 5.4 would have something that would lead into the next expansion, but at the same time there's a few loose ends to tie up, especially with the Chais, for example, and other NPCs that we've met along the way. Um, Maybe we're not going back properly um, to our world, so, so to speak, until 5.4. Who knows at this point? There will be no resolution to why we have two strongest primals, Zodiac and Hydlin, as well as what will happen to them. There are, however, a few things to note. A, we are now heading towards and finally stepping into the conclusion portion of the Hydlin Zodiac arc. B, there will be a pinch of... Oh wow, looks like things are getting real bad, elements written in Once 5.3 story ends. You will also get to learn the direction Garlemald is heading to in patch 5.3 as well. And that ends the main scenario section. So interestingly enough, um, obviously they've got a link Garlemald in, uh, in there somewhere. A lot of people have speculated that the next expansion will be Garlemald focused around the capital and the surrounding areas um, and basically taking Garlemald back, probably putting Maxima in charge or Gaius or somebody. We'll have to wait and see. But I don't think the Garlemald will survive um, for much longer in terms of a story. That's complete speculation on my part, though. But uh, it's interesting to see that they're mentioning how um, Garlemald is, is brought up quite a bit, actually, and 5.3 is supposed to have hints towards that. So the second part is on Yorhar Dark Apocalypse, which a lot of people are hyped for, the next Nier raid. Uh, there will be more emphasis on Nier elements for the continuation. Interesting. Starting the second tier will cause the players to think, aren't we approaching the Nier Automata territory already? 
Interesting again. The equipments for this tier are hinted by Yoshida to be ones that you see in their promotional image, the shadowy figures which 2P faces. So the promotional image, um, which is essentially of the giant robot in the background there and um, various characters. And there's 2P facing against them, perhaps, in this sort of war zone. I don't know what that would mean. Um, interesting. No comments on whether we'll be receiving them as a set in a box or separately. What does that mean? Does that mean in a box? What, as, as merchandise? Or are we talking about, oh, right, maybe like as bosses or something? Okay. I have no idea. Maybe it's the armor, actually. Maybe it's like different classes of gear. I'm not sure. That image is a little bit sketch, to be perfectly honest. I'm not sure what's going off in there. Um, so, there will be no equipment rewards where everyone will need roll for this time. Oh, good. So there's no uh, to be dress reward equivalent. That's, well, it's kind of sad, actually. I quite enjoyed that. But the equipment rewards for this tier are done with the supervision of the Nier team for the design of... Uh, with the design from Final Fantasy XIV team. They've worked together to create the variation of equipments for all roles. The equipment design for the third entry of Your Hard Dark Apocalypse is already done and is currently entering production. The good news is that the developers aim to create those elements to have more variation with pattern based on Nier's lore. Well, that's good. I'd like to see some stuff from early Nier stuff. Um, anything's good, really. I love that raid series so far. I can't wait to see what the second part has. Um, interestingly enough, how there's no like direct glamour reward like the 2B dress equivalent. A lot of people are asking for 9S's outfit. Um, maybe there will be that. They don't say there isn't going to be uh, the equipment reward full stop. They just say from roles, right? So we could still get this as a reward from completing the story but for something like that. Um, that would make more sense. Um, but, of course, people would run it less. I kind of like the fact that there's the carrot on a stick, both with the two minions, one which very rarely drops, the black one, and then there's the white one, the little pod minions, and then we have the near uh, crates as well for Glamour, because a lot of people wanted them, and that's the reason that it kept being uh, very easy to queue for. Anyway, that's my opinion. So, patch 5.3 trial, completely uh, hidden, of course, uh, secret until patch is released, Rewards, however, will be weapons from this trial. That's good, uh, good to know. Um, speculation as to what the extreme version weapons will be. I don't know. Maybe 500 and something item level? Or will they be? They'd probably be 500 item level, right? Or 495 or something? I don't know. Probably something like that. Close to 500, I would guess. Um, I'm sure some of you have better guesses. And then there's a section on Unreal Trials and Faux Hollows. We looked at this in previous videos. The mechanics remained the same as it was first released. Oh, right, so of the actual trial, so like Shiva would remain pretty much the same. The damage scaling and the health for the boss are adjusted to fit level 80 standards. They aim to make it feel the same as when you first fought them back then. Okay. Titan Unreal was initially planned to be included for this patch, but if they release it too early, it will end up traumatizing the players like what happened back then. Uh, yeah, I guess infinite landslides would be a problem. Rewards will be obtaining the rights to play the Faux Hollow minigame. The minigame will have a mount and minion as rewards. We finally get information. So, a mount and minion? Interesting. Um... Very interesting, especially considering this is going to be seasonal stuff, right? So that probably means that the mounts are going to be seasonal. Is this the first step into seasonal PvE content? Um, basically, they talked about this before. If you didn't know, it was quoted directly. I can't find it right now. Um, where Yoshi P was saying how they'll be like Shiva, and then after so many months, it'll be rotated out into another boss. So if they're saying there's a mount and a minion reward from these then essentially um, that also means that that mountain minion could be reflective of that of the boss that we're fighting, and it could rotate around as well. I'm very hyped for that, and I'm looking forward to seeing what Unreal Trial has to offer in the Faux Hollow system. Um, hopefully my static will be as well, because I need them to help me do it. 
Uh, they know you will eventually end up getting bored of it if you repeat the same routine every week. Therefore, the bosses will be swapped after every patch. So yeah, every few months or so, uh, it'll be swapped out. That's, that's going to be fun. And hopefully the rewards will as well. Otherwise, it will be pointless. Chronicles of New Era, The Sorrow of Werlite. Unfortunately, there is no eight-man trial for this patch. We already knew that. There will be a specialized battle content for this and a huge one at that. Please look forward to it. It is described as content that contained all of our dreams of a man of the era. Whatever that quote means. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing more weapon stuff. I love the weapon series so far. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but Ruby was fantastic. And I can't wait until they can actually give us another eight man trial in the future. They're some of my favorite things of this expansion so far. Uh, the whole storyline at least, and the, the fight was exceptional. So I'd love to fight Sapphire or Emerald or Ruby or, um, or Diamond whenever they feel like adding that to the game. So then we've got this huge section on Save the Queen and the Southern Bosjan uh, front lines. Unforgiven, unforgotten, it says. Scheduled to release 1.5 months after 5.3, which will be patch 5.35. The scale of the content is larger than when Eureka first started. Oof. You will also, uh, sorry, you will have a separate leveling system called the Resistance Rank. You can level them up easily through solo, right? There is nothing that forces you to have a party for it. So that's a huge listening to the community section there. So there's nothing, they've said here, nothing to force you into a party. You can do it solo. There will be actions that are specific only to the Southern Bosjan, uh, Bosjar frontline available for use. Based on the feedback from Eureka, the actions are called lost actions. So basically logograms. Uh, you have a specific goal this time, to destroy the enemy's fort. Oh, very cool. That sounds fun. You get to join both skirmishes and critical engagements. Each skirmish end with a battle report which, depending on how you perform, you will get more rank points. Both content will take place within the Southern Bosjan Front, and it triggers all the time. So these, like, fate events or something, or it sounds like public stuff, so it doesn't look like you're queuing for anything in there. Once you're in that zone, maybe it's like a fate or something. That sounds fun. The skirmish side is basically joining an operation, which has the same system as a fate, here we go, where everyone can freely join to accumulate battle points. The rate of it happening is high. And critical engagements are a new event-type battle that are developed specifically for Southern Bosnian Frontline. A, there are conditions to trigger them, and it is mostly about the Galian Empire launching an assault at you and your allies. B, you can queue for it anywhere, within the area and players will be selected randomly by the system if the minimum capacity to join the content is reached oh my god a queuing system inside a zone that's what could have saved eureka for me and baldessian but you never know they might do this uh, for the future dungeon as well c there are items where you can obtain them that grant you the priority to join the content and players who contributed to the item obtained within the party will be given priority to enter as well very interesting. That's good. That's good stuff. So if you've done all the work, then you're pretty much getting yourself into that um, that run of the critical engagements. Very cool stuff indeed. That's better than the Baldessian Arsenal conditions for sure. D. Once all conditions are met, the group will be brought into an instance and conduct battle from there. That's awesome. I can't wait to see that in action. Objectives can range from de uh, destroy the large type weapon to defeat the large scale, uh, uh, large scale army. Sorry, Think of it like a boss battle content that requires 24 to 48 bat uh, players to gather and defeat. There is also a bonus content where if you score excellent results in the critical engagement event battle, you will initiate a one-on-one -on -one duel with the en enemy general. Do note that only one will get to participate. Yoshi B described that as a rather than say one-man savage, it's more of a one-man ultimate? Oh my goodness, that is such a cool idea. Like a, a huge standoff, sort of Ghosts of Tsushima style. Like, you just walk straight through the, the castle doors. You're like, who will challenge me? And then you face off in a big battle. That's going to be fun. Hopefully we can spectate that player. That would be amazing. Um, my bets are on the ultimate scaled guy rather than the random pug who gets chosen. Since it's a one-on-one -on -one battle, he says, the other players can only cheer from the sidelines. So they can. Oh my god, that's so good. The one-on-one -on -one duel... 
may be easy for players who are extremely battle-oriented. Okay. Baldessian Arsenal equivalent large-scale content will be implemented on patch 5.4. The dev team aims to create a new system that makes it more accessible, thank God, after taking in opinions from the players. Thank you, Square Enix. That's so good that you've listened to us. There will be two difficulties planned for the content. Okay, the content doesn't require much pre-preparation and is created as a large-scale content where everyone gets to participate. Fantastic. More inclusion, less exclusion, and less drama. Thank you so much for that. That's literally everything I wanted from BA in the first place. I might actually get whatever award you've got in it this time, instead of me never getting Ozma, for example. To upgrade your resistance weapon, they say they will be quests, uh, there will be quests prepared for it. You can upgrade them purely by going through quests from the beginning. So you don't have to do any of the other content, you can do it solo, which is obviously future-proofing it. Um, they said this at the start, there will be two methods, it says here as well. There are two methods to upgrade your weapon. You can upgrade them purely by going through the story quests, as mentioned above, or you can do the skirmishes and obtain the necessary items from there as well. Very cool. It says how it works. The necessary items to upgrade your weapon and the conditions will be presented to you. You can also obtain these items from the outside of uh, Southern Bosnia areas as well. However, when the interviewer asks when the item uh, obtained is something like obtainable from doing Atmelite farming, Yoshi P answered, we can't tell you anything for now, but probably something similar. So there will be some kind of light farm, I would imagine. Uh, since the items can also be obtained through outside of Southern Bosja, you are free to raise your weapon at your own pace. Oh, cool. No elements will be involved for Southern Bosja, so we haven't got the elemental wheel or the magia board or anything like that, thankfully. Um, that was one of the probably, you know, you just spin it once, you've got the enemy, you've got the weakness. Easy, but easy mode. So they've not done it this time. Very interesting, though. They're really pushing the idea of accessibility this time around. That was one of the biggest problems with Eureka for a lot of people. I loved Eureka. I loved the grind. I loved the carrot on the stick at the end. Uh, but I have to say stuff like Baldessi and Arsenal and the weapon itself would be nice to be able to just go and solo half of that stuff right now and get some more weapons. Um, instead of relying on other people, it future proofs the content and it's exactly what I wanted uh, going forward. So they've listened to the community and that's a really, really, really good thing. So thank you so much, Square Enix, for listening to us finally. Next, we have, uh, well, near the, near the end now, gathering and crafting item related. There are uh, There will be eight new umbrellas. Wow. Obtainable through Ishgard Restoration and the Southern Bosnia Frontlines. Some of the umbrellas are Eastern themed as well, so Japanese. Oh yeah, everybody wants one of those parasols. I can imagine the G-posers in the comment section going wild right now. Quite rightly so. Some of your pictures are amazing with the parasols we have. I can't wait to see what you do with other ones as well. Fantastic stuff. Sky Steel, uh, Sky Steel Tools upgrade will be implemented in patch 5.35. So not for a while yet then. Um, few, what is it, a few weeks after 5.3 comes out? Something like that. Uh, new crafter and gatherer equipment will be implemented for patch 5.3. These are purely an eye level increase. So this will actually make um, things a little bit easier. A lot of the future crafts will be easier with the, uh, the new item level ca uh, crafting and gathering stuff. So if you're having trouble with some of the recipes, the expert recipes, this should actually close the gap a bit for you, I think. At patch 5.3, the pentamelded equipments will be superior to sky steel tools. So the new tools then, pentamelded, will be better than sky steel uh, because sky steel hasn't been upgraded yet. That's, you know, how it's going to be. But don't run out and spend all of your guild just yet because obviously sky, skill, uh, sky steel tools are being upgraded in the near future. There will be a new category called Fashion Items, and the new items, i.e. attachments, will be added like how the new umbrellas are implemented. Though currently still at the planning stage, you can get to, for example, hug a teddy bear while walking. This is meant to be a new system made for role players to enjoy. Hugging a teddy bear and walking around. Oh my god, that is literally the best thing I've read all day. Oh yeah, probably. The idea that you can in interact with other objects and pose with them? Oh, Square Enix. Yoshi P, you have done us a great service here. 
So that's going to be called the fashion items. Oh man, that's going to make the G Post community so happy. It's going to make me happy. Really looking forward to that. Really happy that they've decided to do that. And hopefully you are too. That is such a cool thing. It's probably the best thing I've read in this uh, the section of translated notes, actually. Very cool indeed. And finally, let's uh, just quickly talk about the new Beast Tribe quests, the Dwarfs. Apparently their quests will be done through Lakeland, so that's where they're going to be hosted. Not in Tomra or anything like that, uh, like people believed before. So we'll be going to Lakeland to do their quests. Um, and the reward will be a mount, apparently, um, which is no surprise to anyone really. Uh, the last section is just about apologizing for the delays thanks to COVID and thanking you the community and little delays and stuff. And they also talk a little bit about PlayStation 5. Um, Yoshi P says he cannot provide anything regarding the plans for PS5 right now, but considering the plan to migrate users from PS3 to PS4 had been smooth sailing, he hoped for the same procedure uh, can be done in the future without hiccups. So there we go. Once uh, all plans have been settled, he'll make an announcement. So there we go. That's pretty much it. Um, there's lots of people talking about rerunning the Final Fantasy 15 collab event. So uh, he's thinking about rerunning that at some point. But this will require them to know when to slot it in because there are other seasonal events underway too. So we will be getting the Final Fantasy 15 event back with the regalia mount, etc., so there you go. Confirmation, we're actually going to get that back. Thanks to everybody asking for it. So there we go. Community voices are heard. Um, you need to go to the forums. You need to stop complaining. And you just need to request it and talk about how much you passionately want it with a positive mental attitude. And you get what you want. That's how this community works. We're a friendly community. But if you don't say anything then you might as well have not said anything at all, unless it's on the forums. If you just talk verbally with your friends that you disagree about something, it's not going to fix anything. Go to the forums, post on there, because the people that do post on the forums, the majority of the time, it might not be what you agree with. So I've always said this, if you disagree with a change in a patch, you should always go to the forums and be vocal about it in a constructive manner. Otherwise, we'll end up getting things that you disagree with far into the future. Anyway, things I'm hyped for. The Bosgian um, Southern Front looks amazing. It sounds like Eureka with a lot of really nice positive uh, you know, changes, especially towards grouping with other players. The accessibility is higher. And it does mean that if you want none of that, you can do it solo as well, just for your relic, which is future-proofing and also uh, helping a lot of people who have a problem with um, you know, social communities and pray maybe they just want to play solo so that's really good i'm really hyped for that fashion system though if you can tell from my voice but the idea of holding that teddy bear walking around and stuff the 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 limitations of that are endless can you imagine like a little chocobo plushie and you're hugging it and taking pictures of that and then emoting with this stuff or i don't know holding a camera in your hand or something or you know it extends the you know, what people do with emotes already, like most of us use like the Tomestone uh, phone emote um, and then pause it to take pictures. Well, you could probably walk around with that phone, right? Theoretically, if that was ever added as a way of doing it. But man, this could be a really, really awesome step forward, especially for video making and machinima and uh, obviously for the GPOs and roleplay community. It's a big, big thing to mention. Um, I'm hyped for that specifically. Uh, the crafting and gathering stuff's cool. Um, I'm looking forward to getting the new stuff. Uh, it's not quite as impressive to me personally as the Southern Front. Um, very hyped for the Unreal Trials and Faux Hollows now that we know there's minions and mounts behind them. Uh, the rotation of that seasonal type PvE content is something that the game sorely needs, in my opinion. It would really freshen things up. It works with time walking in World of Warcraft if we were to compare it to something vaguely similar, although it's not really, is it? Uh, but seasonal PvE content is a really good idea and um, you know does engage people to actually play the game uh, where ordinarily they might unsubscribe from it. But it is still you know a mount and a minion. It's They've not mentioned anything hard yet, like a getting you a, a really good weapon or anything, but they haven't not said that either yet. Uh, Your Hard Dark Apocalypse looks amazing. I can't wait to hear more from that. I'm interested if we'll get the actual uh, Glamour Award for 9S at some point, maybe from a quest, since they're sort of shying away from the idea of rolling for it. Completely understandable, but at the same time, I do think that a carrot on the stick is needed for those Alliance queues to keep, um, you know, 
fairly instant for people. But uh, we'll have to see how it shapes up. Is As regards to the main scenario, I'm just looking forward to anything right now. I can't speculate too much. I think I've speculated enough in my videos, but I'm really, really hyped. Either way, thank you kindly for watching this video and probably listening to it because there's not much to actually show you on screen. A link will be in the description for the full notes and all of the translated stuff. Uh, this is from a summary, again, by 11 Mile on the Final Fantasy XIV Reddit. Thank you kindly for posting this. Uh, go and give that some upvotes if you have a Reddit account. Um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Get hyped. Let me know what you're most excited for from those particular translated notes below. And I'll see you all next time. Five guesses that it'll be the fashion system. <laughs> See you later, guys. I'm so hyped for that. It's going to be so cool. Ah, now they just need to add emotes to that, like the ability to, like, swish the teddy bear around. That would be so cool. Or, like, swish the umbrellas around in your hand. Kind of like the saint or something. <laughs> all right. See you all later. Bye.